there's a few people from the public, but this is recording. I want to welcome everybody to the special school board workshop. It's November 3rd, 2020, 630 via Zoom. Um, so I want to thank everybody for carving out this time and to be here. Uh, there are only three uh, attendees. Uh, but I just wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping to start the meeting. And one was to just reiterate in case you didn't hear um, what Jenna just said that this is a different format. It's a webinar. Uh, and therefore, um, I guess your pictures can't be seen, but um, when you raise your hand and it comes time to speak, uh, we'll give you permission to unmute and speak. Um, but the folks that can be seen uh, on the screen are just the panelists, which is the school board, uh, Jen for a little while, and uh, Superintendent Wolfram, um, and then the speaker when they do come in. Um, just a reminder, we are having public comment at the beginning, if it can be based around the subject of this evening's meeting, which is around uh, on the agenda, talking about the DEI work. Um, we had mentioned last week that it was um, the school board working to craft um, a statement. Um, so if you can stay to the agenda item, the the time frame is 30 minutes, uh, not 30 minutes, three minutes. Um, overall, um, public comment time is 20 minutes because the board does need the time to deliberate. This is not um, set up to be a meeting where we listen specifically um, to continue it. It's not a forum to just take in and take in and take in for the whole time. Um, so that being said, this is a meeting. Um, it was, uh, it is designed to be a follow up from the June meeting where we did spend hours listening to the public um, about um, racism, anti racism, what was happening in the country, what is happening in our district. Um, we heard lots of personal anecdotes or stories. Um, we heard lots of opinions, um, a lot of, of um, comments around the area of race. Um, and so we had hoped to follow up a lot sooner. Um, and the pandemic kind of took over the, the need to deal with um, getting ourselves back into the schools, getting the students back into schools, I should say. Um, and so um, it is a little bit later than we had originally hoped, but we are following through now with that, um, that June meeting. Um, I want to start off by explaining, um, I was the one who asked <clears throat> to have this special workshop um, and it comes from feeling incomplete back in July um, of the school board creating a statement in response to the national situation around racism that was happening. Um, and there was a little bit of commenting happening and it started to become work that was being done behind the scenes in email and that it became very clear that it needed to be a public discussion for all to see. Um, and so that was the intention behind this. Um, this is not meant to be um, a political statement. It is not meant to be um, a liberal or a conservative or a democratic or um, a Republican statement. This is, something in my opinion that is a humanitarian one. It is coming from, um, from a humanitarian aspect and by no means a political aspect. So I just wanna put that out there up front. Um, and in my opinion, again, it is, it is focusing on an acute, um, specifically driven um, call from these times. Um, of what was happening. So I just wanna sort of remind us that it was back in June and July, there were, there still are, but the protests seemed a little bit more prominent at the time. And um, even though they still exist, um, this, that is the call to the statement for right now. 
So I would like to open it up to um, potential questions or comments. Um, and I'm gonna get my little handy dandy timer just to be a little official here. Um, and I will call um, again, three minutes. If you could keep it um, to the subject at hand, I'll allow Cindy Volt has had her hand raised. You may speak. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Yeah. Uh, this is just real quick administrative. I was going to point out with the webinar format, um, one of the things the town council has been doing at their meetings is um, periodically throughout the meetings, just give an update on how many people are listening because as um, members of the public, we don't have a idea of how many people are on the meeting and sometimes that's helpful to know. So you, at the beginning, you mentioned we only had, you only had three people from the public here, but I just uh, wanted to offer that up. I noticed the town council doing it at the last couple of meetings and it was really helpful. That's great, Cindy. Thank you for that. Um, we're up to five right now and I like that suggestion. I will um, try to remember to do that at times. Thank you so much. Um, Terry Patterson has her hand raised so you should be allowed to speak. Can you hear me? I can. Hi, it's Terry Patterson. I live at 15 Surf Road and thank you for um, allowing me to speak. I first wanna commend you for following through with this and really doing this important work. I um, completely recognize that it's not easy, um, but it's certainly as critical in creating a school environment where our kids can not only learn, but more importantly, feel safe. Um, as you kind of work toward refining and articulating your statement around this, um, I strongly encourage you to endorse Black Lives Matter. Um, fighting racism is not and should not be considered controversial, right? I mean, I agree with what you said. Black Lives Matter is not a political statement. Um, I think Scarborough learned that recently a hard way after a statement that was released to its staffing about discussions around the elections, which is certainly separate from this, but I think kind of the outrage and concern that was raised in the community is real. Um, it's absolutely about human justice and equity and systemic racism. And um, I know you had long discussions over the summer about all of this um, racial sensitivity training and you know, kind of where people stand and what needs to be done. Um, but I don't think it's something to shy away from. I don't think there's anything wrong with being very clear that Black Lives Matter, that Black Lives do matter, and then and then following through, right, and and how you kind of operationalize a platform like that in a community like ours. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Um, Uh, next up is Melanie, and then I'll call on Wynn. Um, Melanie Thomas, you have the floor. Welcome. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, Melanie Thomas, Six Starboard Drive, Cape Elizabeth, Maine, of course. Um, first of all, I just want to thank you all for your work and what you do do. Uh, and what you continue to do uh, for us Cape citizens. Um, specifically on the topic, I, I, I just want to address um, as a person of color here in Cape Elizabeth and someone who has um, really listened in on school board meetings, town council meetings, and, and so much more that um, I, I'm just really concerned that you you had in you had June, you had July, you had August, you had September, you had October, and here we are in November, and still no statement um, about Black Lives Matter mattering. Um, whether you capitalize it, whether you put it in bold, whether you make it small letters, the point is, you know, it, it's very difficult to even. It's concerning that I'm not even seeing. Um, a statement or that you can't say Black Lives Matter um, because they do matter. And this is the topic that really needs to be at the forefront right now, um, as does COVID-19, as does um, the school budget, as does so many things. But 
you know, this is, continu this is going to continue to be an issue and it's an issue that really should be at the forefront. Um, I was at the unity rally in June. I was at the peaceful protest here in Cape Elizabeth. And, you know, we have very caring um, citizens here that, that are looking for leadership and looking for change and, and, and they really want to see it. And so do the people of color here. Um, and the lack of diversity, whether it's one person, whether it's 10 people or a hundred, it, it, it should not matter. It should be a, a clear, bold statement that the people that are being affected right now, uh, and it happens to be people of color, uh, that you address it, that we feel included. Um, and, it, and it's just that simple, that it, that it should be said. Um, I have, I'm born and raised here. Um, I'm concerned about my kids being born and raised here and going through the school system um, like I did, and that my mom also is born and raised here, um, was, and went through the school system. I would not like to see a generation follow my mom's generation, then with me, and then with my kids, where um, we lack representation here, we lack a curriculum, um, we, we lack inclusion, um, and so many things that I want more for my kids now. So it, it's a must now for me to have to um, speak up on their behalf as well. I just wanted to say one more thing. Um, and it's that- Let's wrap it up though, it's three minutes. That would be great, oh. honey, thanks. Yes, am I already up? Am I three minutes you already? Are. You are, but if it's a quick- It, it is. I just, wanna, I just wanna say there's so much work that needs to be done around inclusion. We need to do more to eliminate racism, sexism, hatred, bigotry, and so much more. Um, we need to sink more resources, resources into education and marginal education um, in these areas just will never be enough. And I just really hope that we can do better and, and to have a better stance here as Kate. I, I, I just really want to demand a little more. So that's all I have to say. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, when you have the ability to speak. Thanks. Um, yes, my name is Winthrop Phillips, and I'm the uh, I'm a teacher at Cape Elizabeth High School, and I'm also uh, uh, president of the Cape Elizabeth uh, Education Association. I just wanted to say that, um, that that thank you. I'm glad that the board is uh, is looking at this and addressing this. Um, I want to say also that the teachers are are already um, have already begun work on on becoming anti racist. Um, we know that systematic racism is a problem. We have to all uh, agree and admit that it's, a, it's an issue that we all need to address, that we all have to participate in addressing it. And I think that the teachers are, are prepared to do that. Um, you know, we always have to think that, that this is a nationwide problem and all, all problems are solved first at the local level. And so it would be wonderful, wonderful if, uh, if this were something that we decided, yes, we're all going to be united in this you know, it's not just uh, it's not just uh, incumbent upon a certain school, a certain department, um, a certain um, uh, you know the the board. It has to be everyone. And so, if uh, if we're all going to be united in this, I think it's really um, important that the school board um, come up with a, a a strong statement about it. Um, and you know, uh, are, and and in some way that I mean that endorses the work that we're already beginning. Um, so we just have to remember that to be anti-racist, we have to address the policies, the statements, the laws, the stances that, um, that are in some way or in, in very blatant ways racist. So um, I'm, I encourage the board to, to speak strongly on this. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Okay. Um, there are five attendees. There's nobody else who has um, raised their hand to ask to speak. So I'm gonna close the public comment time and that leaves the board with our work of where we want to head. Is there anybody who would like to, I've said a few statements. Um, 
I would like to make a statement um, specifically geared towards racism and anti-racism and our stance as a board around that specific topic for a few reasons. Um, one is um, I think this statement is a response to a national situation that is long overdue. I don't mean in the few months, but that this systemic racism has been happening for so long that um, the, the, oh, it's time for me to stop talking. Um, for us to start really digging our teeth into it and, and making a strong, clear statement around how we feel about racism. Um, I think, um, it sounds like according to what Wynn just said, the teachers are doing the work around that right now. Um, and um, it seemed like it was the will of the town. It was a call from the community this summer through the letter that we received from the teachers, some of the boards that were put out um, on the streets, the signs. Um, wanting to know how we as a board feel specifically about this issue. And um, I would like to make a statement um, and we can tweak it that some the town has, I believe theirs is reject the, the, the town of Cape Elizabeth rejects racism. It's something like that. Um, I would like to do our version of that. Um, so that, that's my catalyst to the conversation. And um, others who would like to speak. Kimberly, you had your hand raised. You should be able to unmute yourself, I think. Yeah. OK, I and then sorry, we'll, I, you can go after Kimberly. Horrible... Can you not hear me? You're coming in and out a little bit. Can you hear me? Yes, I can now. Yeah, I have a horrible, I have a horrible connection tonight. I've, I've been kicked off twice. Um, so let me, I'll move to a different spot and see if you can hear me better. How about carry forth with the next person and I'll try and find a better spot in my house. How about I? You were fine, we were able to hear you fine. While Kimberly searches for her connection, uh, Heather, I think it would be helpful if we take a look at the statement that you originally crafted or we looked at in the beginning of July. So we have a starting point for our discussion, maybe helpful. The statement from July, do you have easy access to that? I don't currently have that right on me. <laughs> I didn't bring that to the meeting. Okay. But do you have it right in front I of you? I do. I think this Would you is mind it. reading it? Sure. The Cape Elizabeth School Board believes that Black Lives Matter, differently abled people matter, um, lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, trans, transgender, queer people matter, as do any group that feel marginalized. Because, and that was it. Yeah. And then you, then you went into something else. But that was the statement that I believe we were all working off of when we started communicating on email and you thought it would be better that we just do it in a workshop. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that, Laura. Heather, I don't know if I, can you hear me now? I can. All right. Um, so I, I guess I see this statement as, um, I, I feel really strongly that this statement um, speaks specifically to the racial injustice. Um, and I, I absolutely support inclusion of all, um, but I, I think the, the real call of the moment is around racial inequity. And um, I would um, advocate that our statement reflect that. Uh, 
Um, I am just trying to look something up here. Um, hope. Thank you, Kimberly. Hi. So, um, uh, somewhat to Laura's point first, I think sort of in structuring our discussion, um, I, I'm, I'm not sure where we want to, I'm not sure where we would end up with the statement, but it, to me, um, it's important that it's not just a statement of, you know, sort of a, a platitude of the Cape Elizabeth School Board today. It really should have something that um, talks about what our intention is for the district on an ongoing basis. Um, and to Wynn's point, um, it should include everyone. So it really isn't, it's not just curriculum, it's staff and staff teacher and school board training. I mean, I, I think we all sort of, um, you know, Kathy Sankard mentioned um, like a, a seminar that she went to and there's, I think we could all learn to, uh, learn to understand the issue better. Um, you know, this is controversial, but I think parents could be trained. <laughs> you know, I mean, this all starts at home. It really starts at home. So we can, the district has a huge responsibility, but, um, you know, you know, when your children come home and you have conversations at the dinner table, that's where these things, you know, so, um, uh, so that's my, my kind of my, my goals would be sort of that if this is a statement about a commitment to an ongoing process, that it has includes everyone, like from the teachers, the staff, the school board, and maybe bring parents in for us for, a, you know, make something available. I, I don't know um, if that's even feasible. Um, and then curriculum and policy are the obvious things that we that we touch and, and care about. Um, so those are my my kind of starting points for hopes and dreams for what this would ultimately entail. Um, I'm gonna go to Nasser next. Hi, good evening. Um, I hope you guys like my tree and hopefully I can show you some wisdom. Uh, since Heather would call me that I look like a Buddha under this tree, so you'll see. Um, thanks for the public. Thanks for the excellent comments. Thanks to Win for uh, uh, representing the teachers and letting us know that work is being done there too. I'm gonna just share a little experience from USM. Uh, as some of you may know that I'm a board of visitors there. And we had an excellent, excellent uh, discussion there. They had formed a group, I think it's called IDE, IC or something, the, the acronym. And that includes fellowships. Students are volunteering to run for a year and then they are becoming the, the diplomats and they reach out to students of all colors and race, and et cetera to make sure their voice are heard. And they are, that voice comes into the president and the president actually has some money for this program. What I liked about that is that it directly impacted the students. It was directly in touch with students and the, and, and the students were in touch with the president directly of USM. Uh, there was a statement, I shared the statement with the board. Uh, and um, so my goal and my, what I would really like to come, like someone has said that it already took us this long to write a statement. I could care less for statements. I really, really want the students to have a voice, the student to launch a program, the student to be more active, and that the superintendent, including the teachers, gets, listens to the students, particular students of a color. I know that our statement is paints broad brush, which is fine uh, because I guess it includes me as a Muslim, it includes me as an Afghan, it includes me as male, it includes me as a brown person. But right now, the focus is Black Lives Matters. And these, this is the reason why we're here. So if we do paint a broad brush or broad brush statement, 
we want to say make sure the end with the asterisk with the bold for now in the year 2020 and 2022 black lives matter maybe next year is muslims maybe the next year after that it may be uh, a gay person or lesbian or whatever so i do want to make emphasize whatever statement we come up with that we do not forget black lives matter thank you Um, sorry, I am trying to take notes a little bit here as I as I listen. So if I pause, that's that's what's happening there. Um, I would like to respond a little bit to that, Nasser. I want to say thank you so much, and I think you were absolutely right. Um, a, a statement is a small piece; like the actions are really what is going to make a difference. And the student involvement and the hard work that's being done with teachers. Um, and I can't speak to all of what is happening, but I do know that there is action happening in the schools right now. Um, yesterday, my senior son was on a call with some teachers and, um, and um, talking about racism, it was after school, certain students were included in that conversation. I do believe there was a person of color, I was, I was overhearing it. And so based on the conversation, that's what it sounded like, I can't be positive, but I think there is action happening. I know there was professional development today, specifically around um, racism and the trauma um, that people of color face. And um, I, I feel like, I, I don't meet, need to be explaining to you based on the stories I've heard from you and, and some of your family members with, with complete respect, but the, the trauma that, those conversations, right? I, I don't, there was a powerful comment this morning in a workshop that I attended um, that I just wanna share that, that, that just, um, that, that speaks volumes and it was, she, she put up a slide and basically the slide said that if you're a person of color, your life expectancy was 20 years shorter overall and that you face these health challenges. And she stopped and she paused and she said, does that make you, you know, if you've had trauma from, from being a person of color, does that make you pause inside and sort of go a little bit to that fight or flight sense? And she said, if it does, I want you to take care of yourself as we move forward. And if it doesn't, then there's a, you really need to do this work and we really need to grab onto this. So my point being is that um, absolutely the actions need to take place. Um, and I kind of lost my train of thought, I'm so sorry, but um, I, 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 I'm supporting what you're, what you're saying. Nasser and, and I, I think, um, you know, we have a meeting planned at the, that in May, I think it is, to hear about what's being done in, in the schools. Um, I think we need to keep checking and keep asking our schools, are we doing stuff? But I, I, I think we need to also remember that work is being done that we're not aware of with teachers and with students and with conversations. And I couldn't agree more that action is the most important thing. At the same time, I feel like the town is asking for us as leaders, as a school board to make a statement, to, 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 to respond and to react to what has happened. So, a statement that they may frown upon, a statement I mean, they may like, a statement, no matter what statement we make, uh, we are going to have some ups and downs. We are going to have some pros and cons. We are going to have people who's going to be happy. We are going to be have people who's going to be disliking. We are going to have people actually picking up the phone call, the phone and calling the superintendent. So just be aware, all of us, I think we are aware, but for the public to be aware, that that's a reality and we cannot please everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. Heather, oh, I have something to say. So, and I, and I hear that, Nasser, that, but then we, we also can, this is not what you're meaning, but I, it just got me thinking. We also can't be so worried about crafting this 
perfect statement that it takes months and months to get a statement out there. And I think that that's what happened on our email chain. We were at a good place. We had open dialogue. I'll speak up because I was one that initially said that I believe at the current time, especially when that email was out, but I think it's still relevant right now. And unfortunately, I think it's going to be relevant in the future too, that we say Black Lives Matter and we end it at that. Because we, we talked Black Lives Matter first, but then we continued with all different lives. And I think not stating the additional lives to the LGBTQ and the different, differently abled people, it doesn't matter that their lives don't, it doesn't, it, it's not saying that their lives don't matter also, but the topic at hand that is most pertinent now is Black Lives Matter. That's number one, but I think we can construct the statement where it doesn't discount the others as well. Like I was just trying to take some notes as what, what a statement could sound like. And if we say, you know, we have a commitment, we unequivocally affirm that black lives matter and believe that racial discrimination and, and injustice are intolerable in any form. So can, there wait, can saying, you repeat that? Let's, I just I, I have to see if I understand my scribble as I was trying to write down some thoughts as they came into my head. So we, um, I have here, we unequivocally affirm that Black Lives Matter and believe that racial discrimination and injustice are intolerable in any form. So that way you're not saying Black Lives Matter and all these other lives matter and all lives matter, which I think really does, it waters down the statement of Black Lives Matter, but you're still saying that it's intolerable in any form. And I think that that was the intention of the emails back and forth saying, I really think we shouldn't just say Black Lives Matter because how about, how about the Muslim lives? How about um, LGBTQ lives? Um, and then it kind of got us in a standstill. We're like, yeah, those lives matter also. But I do think it diminishes the voice that we can have supporting the Black Lives Matter movement but we can also say it's intolerable in any form and then go on to talk about policies and procedures and how we're weaving it into our, you know, or we're making a stance in terms of our curriculum and we can talk about those things. But I like the, that, that we affirm that Black Lives Matter, making a strong statement in that regard. I have some other thoughts too, but I can let some other people think I was wordsmithing here. Let us hear them. Oh, more things? Um, so I would start off by saying something like, we're committed to eradicate um, racism and that um, we're committed to ensuring that all students in Cape Elizabeth feel safe, welcome, and in included in our schools and activities. And then we make our strong statement. As part of that commitment, we unequivocally affirm that Black Lives Matter and believe that racial discrimination and injustice are intolerable in any form. And then we can go, next paragraph, talk about the action, like Nasser was saying, right? Okay, because that's the statement, but now what are we doing? What are we saying we're committing to do? And that's the work. So I can work, work on that next statement, but that was what I had gotten down to get us thinking. And I'm, I'm interested to hear what others think, that if we say, if we make our statement about Black Lives Matter, and then we also say that discrimination and injustice are intolerable in any form, do we feel comfortable with that? Or, or do others think, those that were vocal on the email, that we should still spell out all the other groups? And then how does that in turn reflect the strength of our statement in the Black Lives Matter? So some things to think about, and I'd like to hear from others. Heather, if you don't mind um, giving Laura the permission to put her writing on a computer so we can see, see all the writing on one screen. There's can, no, um, there's no way to do that. Okay. No chat. That's nice. I am taking notes and I'm happy to repeat. There is a share screen. There is a share screen. I have it in a little notebook, but I could type it out. So we could get something. Laura, you should be able to share your screen at the bottom. It says share screen. Yeah, it's just that it's in a notebook, so I'll have to type it in a Word document. You guys got to give me a little minute here. Is that okay if you do that? I appreciate oh, that. Oh, that's fine. Yep. 
I've never won a spelling bee. My second graders is on Thursday. Spelling test, that is. Um, I'll mute it so you don't hear my typing. You... I'm really curious, though, to hear the thoughts because there were some strong thoughts on we should spell out other groups. And that was where I felt strongly that I disagreed. And so I'm, we want the statement to be inclusive of all our thoughts. So interested to hear and I'll start typing. Um, Hope, you had your hand up. Was that from earlier? No, or that's you? new. I was and gonna- And then Jill, I'm gonna let you speak, okay? Go ahead, Hope. Um, so just to comment, to respond to Laura, I, I, like, I like where she's going. I like what she read. I think we should, um, and now she's dusting off the cobwebs. I recall the emails and I do think we need to full stop after Black Lives Matter. Um, that doesn't mean we then, um, that doesn't mean the universe of our actions will be limited to Black Lives Matter, right? So we're acknowledging this, the, the current crisis and that's what's leading us to the next paragraph, which doesn't need to be elaborate, but I, I just, that's where we would just say, and this is what we're, this is what we hope to do. So I, I'm just affirming what Laura's saying. She wanted our opinions and I, I agree with her. Thank you, Hope. Go ahead, Phil. Yeah, no, I was just gonna say the same thing. I'm very comfortable with the way Laura's um, statement is headed. It's where, where I am. I do also think that it's the moment we're in to speak about Black Lives Matter anti-racism and racism that exists. That's what this is about. And it doesn't mean that we are not inclusive or are, or promote any kind of discrimination in other ways. And I just wanted to point out that we already do have an anti-discrimination policy. It's one of our official policies um, that does list um, a large number of groups already. Um, and so uh, it wouldn't be leaving out. And I just wanted to, just for the record, people listening, it's, it's policy AC, and we already um, uh, prohibit discrimination and harassment of both school employees and students because of race, color, sex, sexual uh, orientation, gender identity, religion, ancestry, or national origin, or disability, and additionally for um, employees, two other categories of age and genetic information. So th that is a policy of our school department and our board already. And what I think is, a, it, this is a different moment and this is a affirmative statement about Black Lives Matter and discriminant and um, anti-racism in my view. And that's where I'd like to see the statement go. Um, I also just wanna uh, acknowledge Melanie's comment about us being late and she's right. And we acknowledged that at the last meeting. And I think uh, maybe Laura put it best, which is I think we can sometimes trip over the words to use or maybe uh, sort of get frozen in how we want to express ourselves. And I think, and I apologize personally for that. I do think um, statements matter. I think actions matter more, but it is symbolic. Um, and, it, and it does uh, speak to our values as a, as a school department when you say something. So I, I think it's important to say something, but then I do think that what we do afterwards is more important ultimately. Um, and to that end, and this is not, again, I just apologize for that, but not to excuse it. I do also wanna note what the teachers and the administration have been doing in the interim since our community discussion. And, and, and also that we, we adopted as a goal this year to support the work of the diversity task force um, and that that and we uh, set that task force on on a path to, for their work currently. So I think that's something we've done. We're going to hear from them at the end of the year. Um, and so some things have happened, but I do think that we we need to make a statement. And I and I and I support the direction that we're going right now, as Laura articulated. Laura, how are you doing with that typing? It was just two sentences, so we're good on the typing. I got it down. I can share the screen, but you just have to give me permission. Oh, is that what I have to do? Okay. Yeah. Um, I go down to you. I make you a host. Well, 
make her a co-host. Co-host. Sorry, I'm Donna's usually the host. I'm I'm new at this, so um, make a co-host. Okay. Does that work? Who can share? Only host all panelists. I don't know what this is. Yeah, I think you can share anyway. I think in this new form that you, you can automatically share your screen, so. Okay, I'm trying to right now share the screen. Oh, there we go, here's the document and I'm sharing it now. Okay. There it is. Do you all see it? Um, not yet. There it is. Nope, Got okay. It. Yep. So it's simple. I mean, we could start it off with something like, we are committed to eradicating uh, racism or we're committed to advancing a racially just future, something like that if it needs something else as an intro, or we could just have it really simple, two sentences. Do you mean by feel safe rather than felt safe? Oh, yes. I told you the spelling test. Do we believe that racial discrimination is intolerable in any form or discrimination is intolerable in any form? Because I think the inclusion of racial is specific to the moment we're in. And I agree where we're going with this, but it also, it completely negates your point that um, it's not just about race. So racial can't be in that end of the sentence if we intend for it to be more inclusive and if we don't intend for it to be more inclusive that needs we need to agree on that how about that racial discrimination and injustice is intolerable intolerable in any form it's still racial discrimination and racial racial injustice elizabeth can you explain that one more time I had a hard, I, I tried to follow you and I. It's just missed. a grammatical point. Do our, if we are, so earlier the discussion was that by saying that racial discrimination is intolerable in any form, Laura was putting a lot of emphasis on intolerable in any form, but the racial discrimination and injustice part is not so in any form refers to the racial discrimination and injustice, not, doesn't, are you following me, anybody? I get you. No, I understand. I, what I get it now. Thank you. I, I get it now. So, I so you, you, take out racial, you just take out racial and it becomes discrimination and injustice is intolerable in any form, or we stick to this. Well, I wrote this, so I'm sticking to this, but if other people feel otherwise, let's talk about it. I do not see the grammatical issues here, but again, English is not my first or second language. So I will uh, also like to s ask everybody the reference that Phil made to our policy in existence. And I wonder if I, we need to remind ourselves or people or others with this statement though we have policies this is beyond our policy and we want to be more or less bold or active in reference to black life matters just asking everybody whether we need to make a reference there or not well i'm i'm thinking that in the next paragraph when we talk about our actions we can reference our policy um possibly can i say one thing um I'm noticing that three people had their hands raised. It's harder to follow people because I can't see everybody on the sidebar. So I apologize if I'm missing you, but I'm gonna call on Phil and then Hope. Yeah, I'm sorry, my hand was up from last time, but okay. uh, now that you uh, now that you recognize me, I'll just say I, 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 uh, I like what Nasser just said in terms of this does go beyond our policy. That was, that was what I was trying to say in our play. We should go beyond our policy, we, but we do have a general policy. Um, as well, that does address other forms of discrimination. I also just want to say, and I actually can pause this, I can put this on the next agenda, but I do want to provide an update for the board on the um, School Board Association delegate uh, meeting that I participated in on Friday, which 
was very long. Um, just to let you know, we can put it on the next, but remember there was a diverse, there was a diversity and inclusion um, uh, statement that we voted on to support. And ultimately it was voted on. There was a lot of discussion at the, at the assembly on that and some various amendments. So I'd like to talk about that maybe next time it's, it's, it's a larger issue, but I just, it was an interesting discussion. Um, what apparently is normally a two hour delegate assembly went on for five plus hours, almost six hours um, on last Friday night, <laughs> which very much later than I was expecting. It was almost nine o'clock before I got off. It started at 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, so anyway, I just want to put a pin in that. I talk about the diversity um, statement at the statewide school board and maybe on my update at the next, uh, you know, legislative update at the next uh, school board meeting. Well, is there something we can learn from that statement, Phil, that might, <laughs> since that, that was thought about a lot and spoken about, maybe there's some good pearls we can add to our statement. If well, we're fine with yeah, that. and it, it, so it, it, it sort of gets to the issue, sort of the issue we're talking about now. It, it, it was, it is broader and it, it's okay. a broader, it's a broader statement. Um, it, it almost mirrors our current policy. Um, it's a little, it goes a little bit broader in the terms of it, it, it adopted a rationale that explicitly says that bias exists sometimes in overt actions in our schools. That was one statement that was, and that bias is not always recognized or acknowledged. And we need to have an intentional process to change our practices that lead to stereotypical behavior. Um, one school board, and I think it was Scarborough, interesting enough, voted, wanted an amendment to explicitly say that we are racist, that, that, you know, that, that racism exists in our communities and, um, and to adopt anti-racist policies. That amendment did not pass, but it, I, I think it's going to be put into the rationale, which is a policy statement that accompanies it. Um, but I should have a final statement to share with people, hopefully by the next school board meeting. Okay. Sorry, that was a bit of an aside, up. but it was something I wanted Oops, to mention. Sorry, Bill. That's it. Um, Hope and then Elizabeth. Hope, did you have something? I did, but um, I don't know if Elizabeth wants to speak, if she was going to for a comment, go back to the, the racial discrimination and injustice. I was going to comment on that, but if she wants to, no, okay. Um, so I think I mean, just to be completely, um, I, I, think it's, I, think, I think it's fine the way it's written ultimately. And I think it does mean racial discrimination and racial injustice that grammatically that's how I read it. I think the statement is intended to have, is, 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 has to do with race. So we need to just, and, and to be unequivocal, the statement should just be race. And then when we start to, as, as, as you know, sort of um, nuance as it seems when we take that word out, you know, it changes, it changes the meaning. And that's where we are, I think. Um, and if we're going to say, if we're going to say Black Lives Matter, you know, that, that's, that's the statement we're making. Um, and then, but I understand your point, Elizabeth, in that of course we, we, we care about all types of discrimination and all types of injustice. And, but the moment we sort of combine the two, we've dilu diluted the statement. And I think we, we have the statement and then we can have other, um, the next paragraph can be about how we're addressing this in conjunction with, with all, because the initiatives and whatever we wanna see happen in the district won't just relate to Black Lives Matter. It's, it's, you, you couldn't possibly isolate that as an issue. It, it will be about all types of discrimination and injustice. Right. Um, and then just to comment on Phil's point, um, I mean, and I don't want to overcomplicate it, but maybe it does just say, you know, to, to whatever extent it does have reference, it should reference our policies. You know, we have the policy, we have an anti-harassment policy, we have an, an anti-bullying policy um, and, you know, include all of that. And it can be, a, um, it can sort of be a broader statement in the, in the next paragraph. Elizabeth, did you have something to add? Yeah, a couple of things. So first of all, structurally, I think that this is not how we should start our statement. I think that our statement should start a little bit more um, the way Phil was speaking, which is an acknowledgement of the place we are and acknowledging um, that 
you know, we, we live in a racist society that we have seen these protests, we have heard the hurt from our own citizens and students. And so we start out with, you know, what we have observed, what we acknowledge, what we have heard. And then we move on to something that's stronger than ensuring our, all our students are safe and welcome, but that we are, that we desire to create, you know, an educational community where all people have dignity and equity because it's really not just that we want the students to be safe and welcome, but everybody that enters the doors of our schools, whether it be custodians or psychologists or whoever, it's, it's students, it's everybody in our schools and it's really dignity and equity. Um, and so, you know, in that paragraph, we talk about that and I think it's, it's a wise place to reference that we have these policies and name them, but, you know, say that, you know, we, we aspire to go beyond those policies. These exist, we wanna go further. And then I think we need to end, as people said, with talking about, you know, what has been going on? What is the action that has been taken? And then what are the plans for future action? So that's all I got. Can you repeat your opener again, Elizabeth? Because I was trying to scribble down the notes, but then it didn't get to. too much. And it, it sounded, I realized we needed something here. We can't just bam, come with two sentences. You know, we need something to talk about how we have observed and we acknowledge. It's, it sounded really yeah. good. I don't know that it sounded that good. I just feel like- No, I, I liked it, yeah. but we can at least put it down here. That and then the Cape Elizabeth School it. Board acknowledges that racism exists in, I don't know how we want to say it, in this world, in, in Cape Elizabeth, in our, whatever, and that we It have, exists, period. It exists. It exists, yes, that okay. We have, you know, observed, you know, yeah. injustice around our country. We have heard from our community members and students, we've heard their pain and we've heard their, you know, however we want to go with this, but, you know, acknowledge that, you know, we are responding to what we have heard and witnessed and what we are learning. Okay, stop right there, Elizabeth. That is fantastic. I think we all just need to take a breath for a second. That is powerful. And, and I think that's excellent. I also heard you say then, Elizabeth, um, something about talking about not just students. Yeah, that first paragraph. Oh so, yeah, we had this, yeah, this one. Um, all, you know, that said all people have dignity and equity. I wrote that down. Yeah, I think that we want, I, I think that we might wanna say that we are committed to creating a community where all Member. people, all members, you know, are treated with dignity and equity or something. Of the community. Yep. are treated with dignity. Hold on a second. We as a school board are committed to ensuring that all members of the school system, I mean, because we can't speak to the- yeah. it's, our it's our educational Edu community. Educational community, all members, that's perfect. Feel welcome, feel safe, welcome and included in our schools and activities. But you said something else, tell me again. You said dignity are, and equity. Are treated with dignity and equity. Um, so maybe feel safe, included, and treated with dignity and equity in our schools and activities. How about that? Because it's a little bit redundant. I would, yeah, I was going to say I would take out Cape Elizabeth and I would take out in schools and our in activities because we have our educational community. Okay, so in yeah. uh, feel safe, included, and this is the end of the day. There's no more thoughts. And and what did you say? Are treated with dig dignity Thank you. and equity. And equity. And, Period. and you can take out in our schools and activities, right? Yep. We just who are committed to ensuring that all members of our educational community, uh, right. We can take out in Cape Elizabeth. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh,
And we've already said that that we are the school board. So in the that beginning sentence, we can just say we are committed. Yeah, perfect. All right, now we um, can. I like this so far. And then will you just jot down, because um, I liked this wording too, that Elizabeth said, I know we're not in that part of the conversation, but Laura, since you are in this role of typing it out. I don't know why, yes. Aspire, aspire to go beyond policy. I yeah, yeah, I wrote that, that down too. Language and wording. And then Kimberly had her hand up. She got kicked out into attendee, but is now I think back in a panelist. So Kimberly, if you want to speak up. I, I am, I'm back. Um, and my only thought on the um, that last um, conversation about um, treated with dignity and equity, I feel like as um, as a community, we have more control about how we treat people than how people feel. Um, so, um, I agree, Kimberly. I wanted to say are treated, not feel treated. Uh, feel treated. Where, where are we? It has to be R treated. Oh, and this R doesn't make right. sense at all. We're committed to ensuring that all members of our community. Delete in, yeah. Feel safe. We can pull included. out the feel safe included and, and put it in another part of this statement, too. Yeah, I, I think that make, might make it stronger just because. Um, you know, people are going to have their own feelings that we can't control, but we hopefully can control. That's a good point. How mm -hmm. they're treated. How does it sound now? Stronger. Yeah. This is really good. I just type these two things down because this is what you said before. Do you want to say something like we are committed to upholding our policy and aspire? Mm. I like I was going to label. I, I wanted to name the policies just so that the community is aware of what you might they say are. Might say something like while we already have policies AC and I don't remember the other names. Well, we don't need to say the but right. just the names, the anti-harassment that, that deal with um, you know harassment and um, discrimination. Discrimination comma, we aspire to go beyond policy. I like that. Well, we already have policies designed regarding, regarding. harassment, anti-harassment, right? Yes. And discrimination. discrimination. We aspire to go beyond policy. Okay. This is where you have to put the action in. Right, the action. <laughs> I think it's important to acknowledge the action that the, you know, we even in June we had teachers telling us about what they had had really already been working on. Now we have established the DEI and that's already started. Um, so I feel like we need to acknowledge what's already going on and then talk about the you know goals for the future mm -hmm. or action steps or however you want to label it. Something like, I wonder if we could, um, if we could say, you know, this, we hope to address this through professional development and state what, what's, taken place already in that arena and what we hope to accomplish um, the DEI task force and I don't know cu curriculum planning curriculum or support it, uh, yeah, that's what I was going to say in terms of what we do all this stuff. exactly right the school board will support uh, yeah, efforts yeah, yeah. to uh, broaden you know in broaden professional development on, on the topic And do we want to reiterate that one of our three goals was to support this work? Mm 
support the work of what is the actual goal do you have at handy heather diversity equity and inclusion task force mm -hmm. You want to change those two sentences around? Hmm. Are you saying, Donna, to start with the school board will support efforts to broaden professional development? Yeah. And then go with one of our three school boards. Yeah, I was I was just like typing. Yeah. Yeah, it's just in like, no yeah, particular nope. order. It starts to be stream of consciousness now. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know. Oh. Sorry. I don't know if we need both those sentences, one of our three goals, and then the school board will support efforts to broaden professional development. I think we can go back up to the the one to third paragraph and go into we appreciate or support we support the action that the teachers and administrators have or, or the work that the teachers and administrators have already begun. And then move into, yeah, move into you know the future facing stuff of one of you know the the school board goals. And I think it's not a bad idea, as Hope mentioned, to talk about how do we do that because I think it's still quite a mystery to the majority of the public what exactly the school board can do anyway. You know, right? <laughs> so how do we do that? We can do that by you know we can support efforts to broaden professional development we can you know support this DEI task force we can you know check in there can be different administrator check-ins it's we really have a very high level not in the weeds kind of ability here in reference to the bullet points uh... I take it that DEI task force is going to entertain the idea of launching programs that would empower the students. And hopefully the same group will also look into how to acquire or, or motivate or, or reach out to make sure that we get teachers and staff who are people of color. I don't know if that's probably individual task force. So at the end of that, and I'm thinking it's just begging for something like just getting back to that idea of um, culture or climate. And I can't remember which word Kathy preferred, <laughs> but oh, yeah. remember that discussion. Um, and, you know, we basically want to end with, and this is, this is not elegant, but we want to overall improve the culture and climate of our schools. So, mm -hmm. you know, so that's not that's not my best English teacher way to say it. That's just <laughs> what I think we, we what we want to do. Yeah. And it kind of it, you know that idea can mm -hmm. hang on there after that and above. Like, and do everything in our power to improve the culture and climate of our schools, but that's not the best either. Or wholeheartedly, or, you know, I'm looking for a word like this. Hope you've got one. I mean, we can, it, it can be part of the goals that we adopt. Um, you know, it can be, right. So we have one of the, um, we have our strategic goals, we have our annual goals. We can, um, so it would be, would it be something like referencing and um, vigorously support the health and well-being of all students, or all, not all students, of you know all people in our in our schools, since health and well-being is one of the strategic plan goals. I'm taking well, health and well-being in a bigger way. I, I I like what you have here. Improve the culture and climate of our schools. I just need I like to that too. That right after and and improve the culture. Yeah, we can just do that. Let's see what efforts that. to. Yeah. yeah, I want to be. You can copy and paste. As you know. you type it. 
Go ahead, Nasser. Thank you, Nasser. He's just telling me to cut and paste. He doesn't want to yeah. see me typing frantically. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't think you need to re repeat support efforts because we're basically saying oh, a series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Support yeah, yeah. efforts to, one, yeah, broad and professional support. development. Yeah, Two. okay. We support the work. Okay. The school board will support efforts to broaden professional development. Um, why do I, but then I have here support twice. The school board yeah. will support efforts. Um, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, um, endorse, no, um, endorse the diversity, equity, and sure. inclusion task force, like champion. You know, I'm looking for a word like that. I, I kind of, I'm, I'm feeling champion. Not, I really, <laughs> I like it because it talks about what we're going to do. We want to bring it up at every meeting. That's championing right. something. We're going to be it. strong with these words. Right. We want to keep it on the front burner. And can we say improve the culture and climate of our school community? I like that. Yes. Because I that love brings that. in parents. And take the S off schools. Oh, thank you. Sorry, that I'm gonna do that. I'm sorry, <laughs> Elizabeth. You should, so should have been typing this up. Now I'm starting from the beginning to read it, but why did you delete or take off the the portion that was bullet points, or did you move that into the? Because I, I put them all in there, so I just didn't need those okay. scraps anymore. Okay. I think, and this, do we want to, this is a little wordsmithing, or do we want to capitalize champion or diversity, equity, and inclusion. Task well, group. I was going to do like, you know, you could do DEI and then in parentheses what that's that. great. Yeah. Okay. And I think we're going to have to go back in anyway because school board yes. needs to be capitalized. Cape Elizabeth has Somebody to be spelled else. out. But I'm, I'm not going to make Laura do that. Do you want to say? I'm not going to make you do that. Do you want to say champion the work of the DEI task force? Yes. Yes. That's so good, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I know I love as everybody's ideas come about this gets so much better yeah I, I was wondering you know, I think the championship works there but somewhere at some point uh, I think I mentioned earlier we love to empower the students so the word empower uh, does not work in the place of a champion but is there other places where we, we say about empowering some of the students? I like the word empower too. Maybe empower efforts to improve the culture and climate of our community, school community. So I like the word empower, but I don't know where we would use it. And, and I agree with, with Nasser that, that one of the goals, and I know it is one of the action steps of the DEI task force, but the statement is bigger than empowering students. It's about the entire school community. So unless we're gonna go down and empower students and do this for teachers and do this for parents, I don't know if it fits in the statement. How about it and ultimately improve the culture and climate of our school community? I like that, Laura, put it in. It's more of a wrapping it up. 100%. <laughs> if we want to, to do a wrap up, then, you know, we could just end with a sentence about, un, you know, that we, we know that this work is not anything that's done quickly and that it takes time and a long-term commitment. But, you know, I hate, I'm not gonna say we are committed to the work, long. but something but like that. that makes it sound like, <laughs> That does not belong here. <laughs> sound like, oh, it's going to take forever for you to see any changes. So just be patient. But somehow we have to communicate that we are committed to the work and that we, that not only do we realize that there's no quick fix, but that we're committed to it despite that, something like that. It's an ongoing commitment. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, that could be our, our last paragraph, which would only be a sentence or two. Something like we, we acknowledge that. Oh, go ahead, Hope. What were you going to say? No, I'm sorry. I was just reading out loud. So I we acknowledge that this work takes time, but we're starting today. I don't know. Yeah, that might, both, so, that might sound bad, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sounds not good. Uh, yeah, I kind of think saying, we, this is our on. You know, this is our on. This is our ongoing commitment. commitment. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. That's good. Yeah. That's so much better. Just strong. Just simple. It's the point is it's never good. We're never going to be like check. Yeah, done. it's never done. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, going to say these goals. Cool. These goals and these ideas are only achievable uh, as long as we are committed to it. So something like that effect. We might not need anything after that then, because I think I like that. I like the it. simplicity of this is our ongoing commitment. I think there's strength in the simplicity I agree. of it. Yeah, I was playing with the word dedicated, but I, I think the simplicity of this is our ongo ongoing commitment is powerful and strong way to end. The word of, in this last paragraph, the second sentence, the word of is, is not, it should not be there. We support the work the teachers and administrators have already begun. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that of is not. Good. I'm sure our Do you want to read it out? Do you want to read it out loud? Because sometimes when we read it out loud, we can hear how it sounds. You read it. Yeah, go ahead, Laura. <laughs> Yeah. Do we want to or no? But so, yes, you know, I always it. like. No, to I, I think loud. it's good to read it out loud because then you can also hear the strength and of the, the quirks and also the yep. things that are just not grammatically correct. Let's the have to read it. The Cape Elizabeth and I got these headsets, so it's good. The Cape Elizabeth School Board acknowledges that racism exists. We have observed injustice around our country. We have heard from community members and students. We have heard their pain and we are responding to what we have heard and witnessed and what we are learning. We are committed to ensuring that all members of our educational community are treated with dignity and equity. As part of that commitment, we unavocally affirm that black lives matter and believe that racial discrimination and injustice is intolerable in any form. While we already have policies regarding anti-harassment, anti-discrimination, and anti-bullying, we aspire to go beyond policy. We support the work the teachers and administrators have already begun. The school, board, the school board will support efforts to broaden professional development, champion the work of the DEI, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Task Force, and ultimately improve the culture and climate of our school community. This is our ongoing commitment. <laughs> It's this excellent. I was looking for the little clap thing, but I don't know <laughs> the bottom. Uh, I think I like uh, our teacher, um, the English teacher who's out there working well, is probably wanted to correct all this, but. <laughs> I don't know. I think well, that's Elizabeth it. here. So well, it's wind too, but we. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let a, a nitpicky thing go, which is the the committed in the second sentence and the commitment because. So, I was gonna say in the second. I sentence. noticed that too, Elizabeth, and I was gonna suggest in the second paragraph, how do people like we are dedicated? I like that better because I think it's stronger to finish with this is our ongoing commitment. So, at the yeah. second paragraph, I wanted to say we are dedicated. I agree that was the word too. I was trying so to it's in the nitpicky. Second. Oh, see, I was saying when I originally thought of it, it's like we are committed to this. And then part of that commitment, it follows yeah. that thought. Yeah. So if we're dedicated, then it would be and part of that dedication. Do you do you see what I mean? No, we can't be using the same words again. That's not a good thesaurus. Come on. Real, no, but and, and usually I'm so and I'm so <laughs> against that. But with this, it's like you are then further explaining that. But if you don't like it, hey, I'm not going to split hairs here. So we are. I like the dedicated word, yes. And, and the, but then it's still fine as part of that commitment because you don't want to say as part of that dedication. 
Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. You, yeah, you right. had pulling it through that was, here. That was you know? my point that we used commitment mm-hmm. twice in the second sentence and then we ended with commitment at the end. So it yeah, really, it's really honing in. I love commitment. the end. The end is great. Okay. Um, as part of that promise, as part no. of that, as part dedication. of dedication, you would say it again then here. Yeah, but come well, on. You would, I wouldn't. <laughs> I think since you started this, Laura, you should choose your words. Keep getting rid of the dedicated podcast, committed. I like that we do say that as part of that, whatever. Yeah. I, I see what say as part of that dedication. That's fine. I, I just. No, but I, I don't like, like as part of that now. dedication. It's I think that's commitment. Not- a minute works better there. And I, you know and what I'm going to do? I'm going to copy and paste for master. So it actually works fine to have dedicated and commitment in in those sentences. Yeah. Oh, so you want dedicated here? Okay, I, I go fine. back. Yeah, okay. I, yeah, I, I like dedicated because the dedication is the same as the commitment. Yeah, yeah, it's just a synonym. That's a synonym. I'm more dedicated than you, Elizabeth, than, than you being committed to this board. <laughs> yeah. no, Elizabeth is the dedicated and know. commitment. She is the epitome. Uh, we, think we, we should let Wood speak. <laughs> I really so, think we shouldn't. We'd be in trouble. No, <laughs> I, I think we're good now. I think now it's it. And I, I say that and I send to Heather. If we're um, all good I, with us. Are we voting? No, we're not voting. No, we're not voting. I think um, I think one of the things that I really like about what we've crafted here is um, I heard a lot of concern at the beginning of a statement diluting the message. And I don't think anything is being diluted. I think um, it just builds it up to, to support what we're trying to say. And I, 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 I feel like I can stand behind this statement very strongly um, myself and support it a hundred percent. So me too. And I can feel proud of it. I can speak up as someone that was concerned that we weren't going to be inclusive enough, but somehow wanted to find a way to speak of the moment. And I think we've done it very well here. Um, we, that first sentence that says that we're dedicated to ensuring that all members of our educational community are treated with dignity and equity, that's everybody. And then we say, and then we call it out and then we get really specific, but then we end with improve our climate and cult- like, so I think that we have been specific. We've been of the moment, but we haven't sort of pushed everybody else to the side. I, so I, I, I like it. I, I it. feel like we have empower the Black Lives Matter based on what we other based on what we have described. So um, the few black students that we may have in the school should be proud of reading this and uh, and following it. I like it a lot, and I feel I feel confident that I can stand behind it. I wish it came out in July. I'll say mm-hmm. that, but we're doing it. It's coming in coming now. I know I spoke a moment ago about it. Um, I'd like to say one of my concerns was that um, as I've learned a lot since June, I was afraid that our statement would sound like an all lives matter statement and diminish a black lives matter statement. And I don't feel like this does that at all. Um, I I think magically (laughs) it, what you just said, Elizabeth, it is very inclusive, yet very specific at the same time. And I want to thank everybody because I appreciate that. And I understand, I think that it would have been great that if it had come out sooner and I, I ask everybody to give themselves a little grace and, and for the community to give the board grace to try to get it right. And I think we did. Um, it never was off of our minds and it, it took us some time and yeah could it have come out in july maybe would it have been this good maybe not right 
I like the way it sounds. I think it has a nice diverse sentence structure and some good punchy, it, it's well written. So I think good job to all of you guys. We're gonna pat ourselves on the back. <laughs> Thank you for typing, Laura. Yeah. That helped. Phil, are you, are you good with this? Are you feeling comfortable? Yeah, sir. I'm sort of talking to myself in mute form, saying, agreeing with you guys. <laughs> I mean, I'm seeing your head nod, but. Yeah, I'm not. No, I think I, I like where this ended up a lot. I think it's uh, something I can also stand behind and um, and uh, support it. So. Now, what do you want to do with this? Yep. Well, I was just going to send it over to Heather, or <laughs> I can. Yeah. That's the best of me now. And then <laughs> Heather can put it in the Cape Courier. <laughs> I think what John is referring to, Laura, is do we want to vote on it as a statement? Do we oh, I thought we don't vote. Not tonight. Oh. But do we want to put it on our next oh. agenda as an item? Yes, these specifics. Yes. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. we Let's do. Let's do it. Yeah. And, I'll make, and yeah. I will be the first to make a motion. Yes. I will tell oh, you that. It's Laura. Yeah. I, I would love after we do that, though, that it get you know, sometimes the school newsletter used to get emailed out as well as going into the Cape Courier. It would be great to email it out, yeah. get it in the Cape Courier and get it up on the website and make sure that scribing um, credits go to Laura because this was a really unpleasant thing we made her do tonight. That's okay. Good thing I had a typing class in Heather, high school. Help me. Your, did you do your Cape Courier? story already or is it due no it's due it's coming right up okay. oh perfect timing wouldn't yeah. that be awful if i said for some reason it didn't save <laughs> don't worry i took a picture of it oh did you oh perfect <laughs> <laughs> different stages uh, so what to do with this um early early in from the past uh kim had mentioned that we tend to forget about our goals uh, for the year, and uh, we tend to, we may tend to forget about the statement. So, on a routine basis, if we give this these statements and the goals to remind us constantly, either we read it, or we get in a package, or somehow, so we don't forget about it. It's not like we're going to write it and put it in the closet or put it in Cape Cod and call it good. Uh, similar resolution I passed a while back with the town council, putting a lot of teeth. Um, but easy with the with the, with the uh, school board, and we just tend to forget about these things. So I just want to make sure that, as proud as we are, patting ourselves that we have done this, but to remind one another that is this going to be reality, and how do we approach to make sure that we continue our, on our education? Here, here. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that <clears throat> is a completed meeting. I, I don't think, unless anybody has anything else to say, I just want to thank everybody, Laura, especially for really stepping into that role, but everybody for your thought and your care and your openness um, and the ability for us to work together and, and come to this. We want to give an opportunity to the public, uh, those who are still around, to see what they think or no. Um, typically, that's that's not how it's done. It's our statement at that point. We we had the opportunity to listen to them beforehand. Okay, great. Um, I don't see many people anyway. <laughs> yeah, i i think I think too, Nasser, to speak to that is um, you know it was mentioned earlier, right? Some people might not like parts of what we said. And, you know, I am no stranger now to getting negative emails after this summer. And um, it just sort of comes with, with you know, taking a stand and, and having the courage to, to say what you believe or think and, and to put it out there. And, and that may happen. You know, we may get some angry emails about it, but I think this statement is for what the seven of us feel deeply about and feel strongly about and um and the seven of us represent a lot of people who has put us in these positions 
So we are trying to make those constituents happy as well, based on uh, the fact that they voted for us. Kind of. I, 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 I was going to say, it's going to be on the agenda. So if somebody wants to speak to it prior to our voting in public comment at the scoreboard meeting, those comments are more than welcome. That's like true. That. That about that, yeah. So I guess, Donna, it's a good point when we have it obviously on the agenda. If it can be written out fully on the agenda, that would be. Okay, so then you need to make sure you get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll actually... send it to Heather. <laughs> can I just tack on for a second? One thing we did when we had our Cape Schools Open Minds, Open Doors and certain other things is that we had them posted in the schools. And so it might be nice to have like, a few posters made up once we do vote on it and have them in the schools because that, you know, the students then see, the teachers see, they just didn't hear it one time. I, I don't know how many students really log into our meetings and not a lot of them used to attend in person, but just, you know, somehow publicizing. I love that idea, Elizabeth. I wrote it down. I, I love that idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. If nobody has anything else to say. Again, I just wanna offer deep gratitude to all of you. Thank you for your thoughtfulness, your care, your passion. Mm -hmm. And um, hope you have a great night. Bye. Good night. Thank you Bye. very much. Bye, everyone. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Take care.